When you offer us help, we're going to say, no thanks, we'll do it on our own. And then two days later is coming out, why isn't Trump helping us? Gee, I wonder why. <sighs> it amazes me that now the left is both simultaneously mad at Trump for not taking action against the violence and also mad that he did take action <laughs> against the violence. They're mad at him no matter what he does, and that should surprise nobody. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. You know that the Democrats are trying a very bold strategy. It's, it's like that scene, it's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see if it works out for them. So the Democrats now, their, their latest big ploy is they are trying to flip the script on violence and now they're trying to make it as though that it's, it's somewhat 1984-ish. They're pretending like they're against the violence, they're against the riots, and they were always against the violence and the riots, and anybody who says differently is lying to you and trying to trick you. So now here we are, you know, several months after the Democrats have, have been doing this game where they're playing footsie with the rioters and the looters and trying to make excuses for them. And now they're trying to say all of a sudden that they're against that, that they're going to come down hard on it, and they are going to fix the problem. One such piece of evidence of this that surfaced over this week was the Portland mayor, Ted Wheeler. Now remember, Portland has been engulfed in the flames of rioting for about 90-ish days now. And so the Portland mayor, Ted Wheeler, coming up to the podium and talking about this, and, and despite the fact that he has tried to get federal troops out of his city, that he requested that they leave, that whenever assistance has been offered to him from the National Guard or anywhere else, he turns it down, that he has had his own police force that basically ordering them to stand down. This is Ted Wheeler trying to blame, of all people, President Trump for the violence in his own city. Take a watch. For four years, we've had to live with you and your racist attacks on black people. We learned early where, about where your sexist that? attitudes towards women. Again, We've where? had to endure clips of you mocking a disabled man. Completely untrue. We've had to listen to your anti-democratic attacks on journalists. We're not a democracy. We've read your tweets slamming private citizens to the point of receiving death threats. And now you're attacking democratic mayors and the very institutions of democracy that have served this nation well since its founding. Do you seriously wonder, Mr. President, why this is the first time in decades that America has seen this level of violence? It's you oh, who it's Trump. created the hate and the division. The tweets that he has been putting out in the last 48 hours attacking Democratic mayors, attacking those who are trying to bring resolution to the violence in their local communities. He has an opportunity to uplift us and bring us together and help us move through this difficult situation in our nation's history. And instead, he chooses to play petty politics and divide us. That's my reaction. So that's the pro That's where all the violence is coming from. Is it's, it's all Trump's fault because we haven't seen this level of violence in decades. Now, apparently 2015 was not in this decade. Um, I, I guess because, you know, now we're in 2020 and that rolled over. We haven't seen this violence in decades, even though we've only been in this decade for a couple months. But, you know, we haven't seen this violence in decades. Uh, 2015 was five years ago, dude. 2015, when we saw the race riots in reaction to Mike Brown and, and all the other things, when we first saw the rise of Black Lives Matter, when we saw uh, the looting, rioting, burning down of cities and Ferguson and Baltimore and St. Louis and uh, other cities too. Uh, Atlanta had really bad ones. It happened all over the country. But apparently you're supposed to forget all that because it happened more than 15 seconds in the past. And so because of that, this level of violence, that can only be attributable to the fact that Donald Trump is president. Now here's the thing. Ultimately, and this is a feature of the federalist system that our founders put in place with our country, mayors are ultimately responsible for what happens in their city. 
to some degree the governor as well, because the, go the state is sovereign in our federalist system. So it, it is possible that the government shares some culpability depending on how the state set up its, its structure of government. But ultimately, if you're having violence in your city, you as the mayor are the one that is ultimately responsible for that. And I would say that whether the, the mayor were a Democrat or a Republican. But what's hilarious to me is that this whole thing that he does where he's saying that Trump has an opportunity to stop this crisis and he's not doing it. Why would Trump not want to help them stop the violence? Well, first of all, that kind of ignores the fact that Trump actually did send in federal troops not to stop the violence or to stop the rioting, but because they were defending a courthouse that was under attack, a federal courthouse, which is within his legal right to do as the commander-in-chief, as the person that is in charge of the executive branch of the federal government. That is something that is within the purview of the president's power to do. And keep in mind, I'm the guy that doesn't think the president should have any power other than the absolute bare minimum. Defending federal property, even if that property happens to be in a local city, that is something that the president does have the authority to do when it is under threat and under attack. But the mayor wanted those troops out of there. They wanted those people to not be allowed in there. So even with the thing that Trump was doing, he was against that. And let's also remember, this is the same mayor that look at this letter here that he wrote to President Trump when he was offering aid through federal troops or the National Guard. This was Mayor Wheeler's response to this. Uh, on behalf of the city of Portland, no thanks. We don't need your politics of division and demagoguery. Portland, uh, Portlanders are on to you. We have already seen your reckless disregard for human life in the bumbling response to the COVID pandemic, and we know you've reached the conclusion that images of violence and vandalism are your only ticket to re-election. And look at the date, August 28th. The video that I just showed you is from two days after that. So here he is in this letter saying that, no, 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 we, we don't need Trump's help. You stay away from us. When you offer us help, we're going to say, no, thanks. We'll do it on our own. And then two days later is coming out. Why isn't Trump helping us? Gee, I wonder why. <sighs> it amazes me that now the left is both simultaneously mad at Trump for not taking action against the violence and also mad that he did take action against the violence. They're mad at him no matter what he does, and that should surprise nobody. But see, now all of a sudden the Democrats have tried to flip this script. That's how you get two days before this speech is made. The same Democrat mayor, wildly radical leftist, mayor of Portland, saying, no, we don't need your help, we'll be fine, we don't want your presence here, and then two days later complaining that President Trump hasn't done anything to stop the violence. That's how you get that, because now all of a sudden we flip the script yet again. The, the Democrats have tried it. And it, by the way, I just absolutely love this. The Babylon Bee addressed this as well. You know, I've got to show this. So this is a, a headline from the Babylon Bee. Proud mayor lets his entire city burn to the ground just to make Trump look bad. <laughs> uh, this isn't even satire anymore. Babylon Bee, I don't know that. I don't know if you've just forgotten this. You're a satire site. You're not supposed to report real news. <laughs> that, I mean, that's what's happening, though, because he said in that letter that we just read that you see images of violence as your only ticket to the, the White House, and you want to be the person that comes in and on a white horse and, and you know puts a stop to all that. And so, no, I'm not going to accept your help. I'm just going to let the city burn to the ground because I wouldn't accept help from you. I, I want to make you look bad. <laughs> I mean, it's Babylon B is, of course, exaggerating. But in so many words, that's exactly what that letter says. And it is absolutely true. The links that they will go to, I mean, they will do anything to try to hurt Trump on this. And it's hilarious to watch it all unfold. Uh, absolutely astounding. And I, I do love, too, how they are blaming Trump for the violence in Portland. Now I've never been to For Portland, but, uh, Portland, not the reddest part of the country. There are like four Trump supporters in Portland. Uh, they, what, what was it? The Patriot prayer group 
that sometimes comes and does demonstrations in, in Portland, by the way, almost always just in response to demonstrations that have taken place in Portland from Antifa and from Black Lives Matter, there's like, what, 12 of them? I mean, there's the, the idea that Trump supporters are the ones bringing violence to the city. And, and let's also remember that a Trump supporter was straight up executed in the city of Portland the other day. You can see that video online, too, where the guy was saying, hey, we got a Trump supporter, and then they just shoot the guy in cold blood murder him, execute, uh, shoot him execution style just because the guy was a Trump supporter. But yeah, please continue with this narrative that Trump is the cause of the violence in your city. It is absolutely astounding that they're, tr they're going for this play. A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.